Hello, everybody. I am coming to you today with another just talking video because I literally have not had the motivation to actually like film myself doing stuff, but I don't mind talking because I talk aloud to myself all day, every day, anyways. And I just kind of was thinking about some things that I wanted to talk about. I am no way trying to turn this into a podcast, but I do kind of like just talking. I don't really care if there's a camera in my face or not. I just like to talk. Um, so sorry if you guys are not a fan of like this type of video. I don't really care. <laughs> no, I care. I just, to me, this is just easier to do. Um, anyways, I I know I just made a video talking about friends and how friends are hard, but I did kind of want to expand on the introspective uh, part of that. I don't remember much about what I said in that video, but I do want to touch on things a little bit more. So, like I said, I have always had issues with friends or keeping friends and it was always I I was able to keep one friend for like 8 years and then that ended and like I just I feel like I go through friends quite a bit. And I don't have a lot of explanations for it. I know when I was younger, I I would see, like, I would hang out with girls because I wanted to hang out with girls. Um, but I felt like a lot of girls, especially back in, like, elementary school days, were just so bitchy. <laughs> and if you weren't doing something right, they would get mad at you. And because I already socially struggle a lot more than I think a lot of people do, um, I try to just do things to fit in. So, if my friend was wearing this really cute top with these little, like, capri pants, and I want a cute top that has matching capri pants, and I'm going to wear that, I want to plan our outfit with her, and I just, I want to, I, I tried to encapsulate being people, and I think that... <laughs> That's one of the reasons that I think I may have slight autism is because I never really knew how to act like myself. Um, when I did act like myself, I got reprimanded a lot by people. Um, I had a teacher one time in junior high who told me that I was too quiet and that I didn't talk and participate. And she, like, got mad at me for not participating in class. But I, I just I never really wanted to. Back in elementary school, like, I was always the kid that would raise my hand first and try to answer questions. But I also still had that pressure. Like, I was one of those kids who, if you were reading out of the book, I would have to read ahead to see which part I'm reading to memorize it and, like, make sure I can say the words in it. Um, and then yeah, I would plan it out like that. Um, so that that kind of contributed to the social anxiety factor where it's like I want to participate and I want to be involved. But at the same time, it just brings me so much fear. And I don't really know what I was afraid of. I, I know technically nothing bad would happen to me. I mean, there was kids in my classes all the time who didn't do shit. And like they weren't like ridiculed in bad ways most of the time. Uh, there's some teachers that did, but we don't need to talk about them. <laughs> but I think for the most part, yeah, like, I just... Back to the friend thing, I, I wanted friends. I could not make them for the life of me. I feel like I would have one person who was really close to me as a friend, but for my other friends, I would latch on to their friends and, like, try to be involved in their friend group just so I didn't have to, like make more friends because making my own friends was terrifying. Um, so a lot of my elementary school years were like that. Um, and then after like third or fourth grade, when me and the main person in our friend group like started to get into a fight, I 
stopped really talking to a lot of people. Um, and I wouldn't talk to people unless my best friend was with me. And when Facebook, <laughs> when Facebook came into play when I was 12 years old, it made life so much easier because I could talk to people without having to talk to them, you know? I could message them, and we could like and comment on each other's stuff, but then in school, I wouldn't have to, like, talk to them. And honestly, like, a lot of people hate kids having social media, but that was one benefit of getting Facebook when I was 11, was it was easier for me to talk to the people that I was going to school with, because, again, when I'm in person with them, it's really hard. Um... And this was a common theme, like, throughout, even to this day, if I see a person that I'm really, like, interested in, I, I want to emulate them. I want to be them. <laughs> so I will, I'll start doing things like that. And I, I feel like I do it subconsciously now. Like, I don't intend to. It just kind of happens. Um, I take trait stealing to a whole new level. <laughs> So it's really hard for me to, like, pick the right friends because I usually just start acting like whoever I'm hanging around with. And I've had friends point that out to me that that's an issue. That, like, if I hang out with this person, then I turn into a bitch because this person's acting like a bitch or whatever. And I think the – I just – I try to act like the people I'm around when I'm around them because I want to be accepted by them. I want to be understood and accepted. And – the growing up the only way I knew how to be accepted is if I acted like the people I wanted to be accepted by um, nobody has ever wanted me to be myself <laughs> with them and growing up being you know in my 20s now I I've gotten to the point where I am pretty authentic but I am socially paying the price for it I feel like a lot of the relationships I have these days are just there through other connections because I don't have, you know, the one solid best friend that I've always known since school and, like, we're just, we have everything together. Like, no, I thought I had that and then I was very easily dumped <laughs> when she got into a relationship. So, I, me and girls specifically do not get along. My issues with male friends stems from I wanted to be that it girl. <laughs> um, I wanted to be the girl that all the boys were obsessed over. And I think I made myself believe that some of them actually did like me. Uh, and again, this goes back to elementary school where I, you know, I would talk to them. I would just look up how to get guys to look at you and again I'm, I'm fucking like 10 when I'm doing this but I really just wanted attention from guys because I saw everybody else get that kind of attention but I never did um and I, I while I think a lot of it is because in elementary school like everyone's really fucking shallow and judge you like at face value but also I think my personality when I was younger just wasn't to up to par with like what they should have been I I was a smarty pants I was bossy to a lot of people I wanted things to go my way and a lot of this might come as a surprise to people who like grew up with me they're like what no no not at all um no like to my parents like they didn't see how I acted at school with my friends like <laughs> no I I was not a nice kid I was Again, and this also stems with trying to do things that other people did just to be accepted by them. I personally was <laughs> very mean because I was hanging out with the mean girls. Um, I lived a whole mean girl's life. While we weren't that mean, it, you know, it. some of the girls that I hung out with definitely were brats and I turned into that when I was around them because I just I wanted to fit in <laughs> literally to quote American Psycho I want to fit in and uh junior high provided some relief but not much because in junior high I was, again, full force in my emo phase. I was wearing the thick makeup. I had the black hair. I listened to the emo music. I didn't talk to anybody. 
because I wanted to be the cool, mysterious girl that everyone just wanted to get to know, and instead, everyone kind of either blew me off or bullied me because of how I was different. Um, so, you try to fit in and be on one end of the spectrum, and everyone hates you for it. You try to just go your own way and secretly want approval, and everyone hates you for it. You, you, there's really no winning in school. Um, there's no winning. But I did make some more friends in junior high, thank God. <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't super popular. I was not the most emo kid either. My friend Haley was at the time. But I was known as, like, the really emo kid's best friend. So, I mean, I had that going for me, at least. <laughs> But, again, I, I didn't have a lot of friends. I had, like, three. Um, and then I had some classmates that would talk to me, but only talk... They would only talk to me if I was with a friend. If I was by myself, no one really, like, gave a shit. Some of the older girls, like, in the grade above me would talk to me on occasion. But, again, for the most part, people my age did not. I was always, like, talking to the older kids, the people that I had known, but not known enough to be that way with them. Um, but yeah, so, there is that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then... Again, going back to me having male friends, in junior high, that dynamic looked a little different because all of the guys that I wanted to be friends with were actually guys that I had crushes on. And I thought, I had the mentality that if I was friends with somebody, then they would fall in love with me and then we would, you know, be happy boyfriend and girlfriend. And it sounds so messed up to say it because, again, I was 13 at the time, but I, I was so hopeless romantic and I think a lot of that hopeless romanticism came from the fact that I was not getting attention from people <laughs> uh, I got attention from people online you know I was one of those chronically online girls who while I didn't have a kick account well I did for like a day um and got <laughs> didn't get groomed for some reason I was chronically on you now watching live streamers I was on a website called meet me which was like a dating site for teens that again a lot of these are secrets that nobody knows about till now but I, I was chronically online and I thought why can all these people online like lust after me and want me but nobody like in my real life does and I think that's what kind of spouted my obsession with being online is because it was, uh, when I was online it was easier to hide the parts of myself that I think people didn't like about me um and so I just I decided to always be online <laughs> and you know I again if I was friends with girls it always turned into a competition with them as if I was friends with guys it was because I wanted something more out of it but never received that um, and this followed me all the way throughout high school. Like, I did not have a lot of female friends, or the female friends that I did have kind of just didn't stick. And I, again, I don't know why I didn't stick. I literally thought something was always wrong with me, because if I held people up to my standard and, like, dropped friendships that I know were not benefiting me... I feel like everyone hated me for it. <laughs> um, and so, basically, I I was pretty lonely. I, I hung out with my brother and his friends my freshman year, plus my one best friend. Um, and then there was people, again, there was people that I knew. There was people that I talked to. And I say friend very loosely because I've come to realize that friendship, to me, as much as I take it seriously, nobody else takes it that serious. Um... And that's why when I lose friends, it hurts me so much more because I was in it to win it. I was not in it to just, like, dust you off the next day. Like, I wanted long, life t lifelong, lasting friendships, and nobody ever really, you know, gave me that. Um, <laughs> so it hurt a lot more when I would lose friends because of the lack of... I lost my train of thought there. 
the lack of intensity i'm a very intense person i love intensely i hate intensely um but i put up with a lot of bullshit i feel like i put up with a lot of bullshit from people and i let a lot of things slide and then as soon as i stand up for myself or i set those boundaries everyone hates me so friendships have always been a revolving door for me they're very fickle and I have learned to hide the parts of myself that I think people would not like. Um, and I've come to a point now where I'm not even trying to be friends with people anymore. Um, I did have one instance at a party where somebody told me that I'm too standoffish. And it kind of just brings me back to the fact that it's like, yeah, like when I was being super friendly, everyone hated me. So now I'm just, like, not even interested in trying. So, yes, I am standoffish because I don't want people to talk to me anymore. Like, I'm over it. And, of course, like, it's such a fleeting feeling, too, because I I want people to talk to me and I want to be friends with people. But it's just, again, it's really hard for me to do that. So I... It's just such a fucking cycle to be stuck in that I want friends, but I don't want friends because... Most people don't fit my definition of friend. And in my friendships, because I give my all, it really hurts uh, when I lose friends over stupid shit. Or, like, people just stop talking to me. I'm a very object permanence-based person. And I, I got into an argument with somebody back in, I think it was early high school, where... He, like, just stopped hanging out with me as much and, like, stopped talking to me as much. And I told him, I was like, hey, like, I need to, we need to hang out still or we need to talk. Like, I can't just not do that. And he, to quote, he literally told me, we do not have to see each other or talk to be friends. And that just was so weird to me because, again, I if I have a friend, like, obviously I'm going to want to socialize with them. I want to talk with them. I want to hang out with them. And it t shook me to my core when somebody tells you, we don't have to do this to be friends. Because to me, friendship means having that communication. And as I've gotten older, like, I get it. Life gets in the way. But I, again, because I love so intensely and because I'm a very intense person to be friends with I would still talk to people message people back every day regardless of what was going on in my life I would always make the effort to hang out with people and to call people and to text people or whatever I mean not call because I hate phone calls but I would always reach out to people regardless of my personal life no matter how busy I was getting I would always make that effort. So when people vanish and then they come back and they tell me, well, you know, I just got so busy and like I kind of just like got so distracted with this thing. It's like I don't understand that because if you really cared about somebody, you would still make time for it, even if it's just a quick text message like, hey, I was thinking about you or hey, just want to check in. It doesn't have to be intense, but if somebody just leaves, <laughs> ghosts me for weeks and weeks, and then they come back, I don't understand what happened. Because, again, even if I was in the middle of a fucking crisis and someone messaged me, I would just be like, hey, uh, I will get back to you. I'm in something right now, or I'm busy at the moment. But it's still like that communication barrier that's open. And I feel like a lot of people just don't <laughs> utilize the communication bridge. Um, or I guess some people don't think about it because, I don't know, communication to me is literally everything. You don't have to message me every day. You don't have to call me every day. Hell, you don't even have to call me every month. But just like a quick text here or there. Or even at this point in my life and this day and age, even just a little comment on one of my photos or just something to make me feel like you still like me um I had an instance and we're friends again so I don't know if they care if I talk about this or not but I had a group of friends that all collectively at the same time stopped talking to me 
basically ghosted me. Like I, we talked one day and then I did not hear from them ever again until I reached back out, <laughs> which, you know, I don't know, but it was just, I was so confused on why everybody just left. I was like, are people just tolerating me now or did they, were they actually my friend? Because I feel like with a lot of my friendships, because I'm the one always making the effort and always trying to be the one to initiate, that people are annoyed with that. But then they don't, like, reinitiate or message me first, and so it's just such a weird limbo to be stuck in. Um, I don't know. It just, it feels weird. And, yeah, I just, I have friends who just come and go, and... As much as I love these people, I really just wish that there was more communication on that front. Because, again, I get it. Life happens. But if you just stop talking to me, my little object permanence brain is going to be like, oh, they haven't talked to me in a month. They must not want to be my friend anymore. We must not be friends anymore. Um... And I also have this issue, and I noticed this issue a lot, <laughs> the object permanence issue, when I was acting in a haunted house. Because I saw these people every day, basically, for two months straight. And so the first, like, three months after the season ended and I did not hear from anybody broke my spirit. Because I thought that I had made some solid friendships because of how long I was with people and how much in contact I was with them and so the fact that like nobody reached out to me at all I was like what the fuck because I would message people and be like hey like ah. and I it was just nobody not a single soul and it really fucks with my mental health because I know spending time with someone does not mean that you're friends with them but I don't even know what anyone really thinks about when they think about friendship these days. And I, in Jeanette McCurdy's book about her mom, she did have a quote where, I quote this all the time, but it's so fucking true, where I don't like making friends in the, or like, well, now I gotta think about it. I don't like making friends in circumstances because once the circumstance ends, so does the friendship, or something along those lines. I forgot what the quote is now, but... Oh, I don't like knowing people in the context of things, because when the context ends, so does the friendship. And I noticed this when I quit acting at the haunted house, because as soon as I quit, I didn't hear from anybody. Like, really at all. And when I, you know, stopped doing Ariel for a bit, like, I did not hear from anybody, but now that I'm, like, back and involved, like, people talk to me again, and I, I definitely am heavy on the context part, because I feel like if I'm not doing something with somebody, then they just don't want to be around me, um, so, I don't know, I should probably stop talking, I don't even know how long I've been recording, but I just felt like going on this rant today, so, if you guys stuck around for the whole video, thank you so much for listening. I kind of like doing this. I don't really talk like this often. I do talk to myself out loud a lot. And I might try and start recording some of those. Because I, I, I got this idea after just seeing, like, a, a post somebody made about... And, like, I haven't seen them in a while, but, yeah, so... I don't know, maybe I'll do more of these, maybe I'll podcast my life a little bit. I like the idea of just sitting here and talking, because I'm home alone and no one can stop me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you all so much for watching, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time. Bye!